Hi, I am actress, producer, director, writer, Lee Purcell, and you are watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. Hey, I'm singer-songwriter Hayes Warner, and you're watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest, Lee Purcell. Musical guest, Hayes Warner. And now, here's your host, Todd Wharton. Welcome to another edition of Big Time with Todd Warden. I'm your man, the host, Todd Warden. Now, before we get to the show, I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter and a happy Passover that just happened this past weekend. Hope you guys had a great time. Now, speaking of Easter, I've had a lot of emails and people DM me regarding a particular parody that we did on Easter. And you know what? I found it. And guys, here it is. By your request, where's my candy? Man, I can't believe I miss Easter again. No Easter baskets, no Easter candy. Yo, where my peeps at? When I was walking off my sorrows, I heard a voice. Todd! <laughs> Guys, we're gonna have a great show for you tonight. Two-time Emmy nominated actors meet the sellers in the house. And then later on, People Magazine 2023 Artists to Watch. My girl, Hayes Warner, is gonna be in the house performing a new hit song, Airport. So guys, stick around and we'll be right back after these messages. FaceTime with Todd Wharton is brought to you by Road Trip with the Parents. This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. This concludes the test. If this was an actual emergency and you were subject to this type of music, we recommend you open the door Throw yourself into oncoming traffic and kiss your ass goodbye. Welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is a two-time Emmy-nominated actress. She's very well known for her role in the hit movie Valley Girl starring Nicolas Cage. But she's also working on a virtual anthology series that's been a hit right now. She's the producer, actor, and the director of the show. But before we get to that, why don't we check out a couple of clips of her Emmy-nominated performances? Don't, don't you blaspheme. Don't you do it. They got you lit, you start that. Listen to me. Listen to me, James Earl. They ain't got us down. I tell you that. They ain't. We're gonna be strong and keep going, and we're gonna get out of this veil of tears. <laughs> I was afraid that I could actually see her face, that I would see what you saw in her. That I would see what was wrong with me. That after so many years, I had become too dependent on you. Far too dependent. That you were still Tom. But I had become Tom and Anne. Tom and Anne. I'm smarter now. I'm Anne. Please welcome to the show, Lee Purcell. Oh, Lee, how you doing? I am just doing really wonderful, really wonderful. Here I am with the snow-capped I love background it. in L.A. I mean, this is not this week. It was a few weeks ago. And there you are with the fabulous Times Square. So, Yeah. We got the nighttime here because technically you're three hours behind, right? That's you got the we snow. Got the I got, got the cold. 
and right. the lights and everything. So we're gonna have a good time today. East Coast to West Coast interview, which is awesome. Totally. Like I always say, right behind me, be you always. And that's what we're gonna do here today. Love it, love Pretty it. Pretty cool. Uh, Lee, first of all, um, like I say to some of my other guests and that I'm privileged to have my show, congratulations on such a successful career up to this point. Um, Emmy nominations, uh, even though a lot of people say you work with the greats like Steve McQueen, you know, Charles Bronson, John Voight, the list goes on and on. I think they would say the same thing about them working with you as well. Well, that's nice. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can ask John. I can't ask Steve or or Charlie, but I could ask John. I, yeah, are you, are you please your work with me. You know, I don't know. I think you say yes. Yes, I, I think so. It's like, and then be like, yeah, you know, I mean, Angelina told me you said you liked me. So, you know, I figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Angel if you guys don't know, Angelina Jolie is John Boyd's daughter. A lot of people don't know that, but that's right. That's name right. Is name. But we're talking yeah. to Lee Cassell right now uh, from um, Hollywood back in LA, right Hollywood. behind us. Yes, which is beautiful. You've done a lot of stuff in your career. Um, obviously, one of the known roles beyond the other ones was Valley Girl with Nicolas Cage. Uh, that was, I believe, Nicolas' breakout movie. And I've it seen was, it. Was. And I'll tell you a fun fact, a fun yeah. thing that's happening. If you were if you were here still, you could come. But uh, shockingly, uh, it is the 40th anniversary of Valley Girl. So shockingly, I can't even believe how that happened. But it is. I know. How'd that happen? You, you know, look like, no more than 36, 37, because you are mature. So I don't uh, even know how. Uh, no, thank you. You know, good lighting and duct tape, what can I say? <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we are, uh, actually, my friend Heidi, Heidi Holliker, who was in Valley Girl playing mm -hmm. Stephanie. Uh, she always teases me. I never remember the movies I do. But... Um, she has arranged this huge thing. So we're doing a 40th anniversary uh, reunion celebration at the Chinese Man Theater, which is the big, 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 famous Chinese theater in LA that yeah. everybody knows from the news and movies and whatever. And so we're all going to be there. I don't know if Nick is going to be there. I know that he has been invited. Mm -hmm. uh, so see, but I know every there's like 17 or 18 of us who are going to be there. And it's pretty i mean it hasn't even gotten released yet to the press and it's already like 80 85 percent sold out so that's very exciting that we're going to do that and then two days later we're doing another 40th anniversary celebration at quentin tarantino's theater the new beverly theater which we've been there before for other yeah. i've been there for a bunch of my movies there and uh, and they show everything in 35 millimeter which is really wonderful such a difference between that and digital. And so there's another celebration there. And actually in the new Beverly is going to run the movie for three days in a row, but we will only be there for Saturday night, that 29th, because the Chinese is the 27th and the new Beverly is the 29th. And so April, correct? April, yes, sorry. Yes, April, yeah, today being yeah. not April. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess I got to speak to you guys offline and see if I can make that happen because that would be an amazing historical thing to attend, obviously. Um, it is. It's very amazing. historical. Amazing movie. It had so many great people come out of it, like you and Nicholas and your your co-stars as well. But yes. you're working on a lot of great things now. Um, one of the things that I'm loving right now, um, and it gives back to charities, the whole thing is the Hollywood radio players. Right. Uh, not only are you, are you an Emmy nominated actress, but you're now getting into directing and producing. And uh, let's talk about that because if people don't know radio players, this was an old school type of way they used to put out shows that you can listen to. If you guys watch The Christmas Story, when he was talking about his oval team and listening to the radio yeah. hour, yeah. you guys took this to another level where you put it on Zoom now. So it's kind of a cross between a radio platform and TV, where you actually get to see the actors doing mm -hmm. what they do. How did you get involved with this, and what was the inspiration behind it? Well, um, my partner and I, my producing partner, Michael Carnegie, who is a brilliant technician and, and a brilliant actor, he, uh, we uh, produce it, and 
like you said, it's called Hollywood Radio Players, and our website is hollywoodradioplayers.com. Mm -hmm. And we have also a YouTube channel, Hollywood Radio Players, and, and social media and, and so forth. So what happened was that we used to perform live doing a classic radio plays from the golden age, which was from the 30s through the 50s. But then there was a, a bit of a bleed over into the 60s and a little bit earlier in the 20s. I'm a real like radio nerd. And uh, because I just I love the history of classic radio and the legacy of classic radio. I can talk about it for hours, yeah. and, which will probably bore you to death. But so what happened was that we had been performing for several years um, live um, under a different group, a different name mm -hmm. and um, in, in LA. And then the pandemic, like shut all theater down, shut us, shut us down too, right? So we couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So as a group, because we have a, a company, it's, it's a company of actors, directors, producers, technical people, editors, and so forth. We were very frustrated and trying to figure out what to do. And could we, because we didn't want to just stop. And I had seen a friend of mine um, who was doing a, a parody of a soap opera on Zoom. So I was wondering, after I had seen his parody of, of a soap opera, if we could do our classic radio plays on Zoom. And so I brought that idea to the group. We all started talking about it and everybody was pretty, uh, pretty excited about, but we had no idea how to do it. Yeah. Just none, right. So it was a huge learning curve because even though people have done performances on Zoom, they don't do it like we do it. Ours is a Zoom hybrid because we have special effects, sound effects, music, costumes, uh, you know, everything. And all you see is us from the chest up, like you're seeing you and me now, right? Mm -hmm. But we, it's very elaborate and it's edited. We, we shoot, uh, we record scene by scene by scene. We don't go straight through and then we give notes between the scenes. Yeah. And so we have learned all, all of this in the past couple of years. And we now have up on our website, which links to our YouTube channel, we have um, seven shows. We're about to post our eighth. And uh, which is Dragnet, uh, a an episode of Dragnet from I forget what year it was, nineteen fifty something. Dragnet was fifty summer remade in the late eighties with Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd. Right, but we're not doing that. <laughs> we're you know what we what we do. I mean that would be nice. Yeah. But what we do is we uh, stick very closely to the historical scripts. We don't write them unless there's something that just has to be changed for some technical reason, right? We stick very closely to those historical scripts. And so um, if anybody wants to watch it, we have a menu of our shows on the website. Mm -hmm. You just click and it takes you right to the YouTube show. It's very convenient. And, um, and we do this because when we started doing it, we thought, wouldn't it be nice if, because we didn't want to get paid for it. Right. We wanted to, we wanted it to benefit um, a worthwhile organization. Mm -hmm. And I was already, because I'm a union activist, uh, mm -hmm. I was already doing projects and, and things with the Motion Picture and Television Fund. And um, so I approached them and we made an agreement. And it was very timely because it was the 100th anniversary mm -hmm. of the Motion Picture and Television Fund. And, and they said, oh my gosh, classic radio, that couldn't be more perfect. Mm -hmm. So so they put it out uh, in their newsletter. It goes out uh, it goes out first on their newsletter every month, the new show, and that goes to 35,000 plus people. So that's a nice, nice built-in audience. Mm -hmm. And we're raising money for them. And so we're really happy about that. And they're really happy about that. And we have uh, a lot of fun. You know, we have vast hat collections and, and, you know, suits with padded shoulders and uh, period jewelry. And it's a very, it's a really a worthwhile, it's really a worthwhile undertaking. And so we get to do what we want to do without worrying about, you know, network bosses or streaming or anything. We just choose a show and we just do it. Oh. And, and there's just so many wonderful shows. And like I said, I could talk about this for hours, but a passion there's no limit on passion that's what there's I no limit about. no there is no, no limit. limit now you guys get to rotate 
um, your responsibilities, right? So you can be a director and want to be a producer, another one could be an actor. What I did like about this thing when I was reading uh, the, bio, um, the bio of it, you can actually right. see so many actors reading the script, right? Why they're doing yes. this, which is great. Um, and we do the tradition. We, we follow a tradition of classic radio, just like we used to when we uh, perform live. Mm -hmm. We, Of course, we were standing on a stage and we had standing mics and we had music stands and 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 we had our, we have our special effect our special effects magic box because mm -hmm. we have all kinds of real real special effects like people used to back in the day and so we've tried to carry that forward in that um we intentionally do not memorize the scripts because that is not what they did they read mm -hmm. you know, if you've ever seen pictures of people doing classic radio they're holding it they're reading the script and so we read the script it's not that we're not familiar with script. We certainly are. We rehearse, right. but we want to stick as close as we can to the tradition because it's, it's, I think, and well, we all think it's a very important tradition without classic radio. TV would not have become what it did. It just wouldn't. Yeah. And I agree with you. And I love the fact one of the, the missing arts that I think a lot of kids growing up are missing are reading. Uh, nobody's really reading that much anymore. Um, right. And I can't even read on a tablet because the lights and everything messes with your eyes. Not good for you. And let's do this. I, I like opening a book. And I with do too. this, this is kind of like video on tape, but through a Zoom where you can hear the story, be grateful to see the actors, but it's still like a book where it can enable your mind to create the picture in your head on what's going on right through the effects and what i love about this is is now there's two platforms that people can really relate to you have jimmy Kimmel who takes classic shows and they do a reenactment live and now you got the hollywood radio players yeah. which takes classic shows tapes it because they want to really make it intuitive where you can really understand how powerful radio tv is it is. And I think it's awesome. And I think as this thing grows and it's going to, I could see a year from now or two years from now, you guys doing one live show per year. Once you get obviously the funding where you could do the effects in the background the same way, which takes a lot more technology. Right. I can see you guys doing that like a remake of It's a Wonderful Life. Right? Well, it's funny. Yeah. It, it, it. We are going to start performing live, but not with Hollywood Radio Plays with this other group, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to we're going to go back and perform live in September. But these are two completely separate groups, mm -hmm. and and we have we have been invited as Hollywood Radio Players to perform live, and eventually, eventually, I, I'm sure that we will. But but right now, this is this is the way we're doing it, and. And and we our catchphrase is radio you can see mm -hmm. because it is radio you can see yeah and, but if you wanted to you can turn off the video and just listen to the audio and there are some people who have told me that they've done that and they really liked it and we are going to eventually not too far in the future we're going to also add uh, add the podcast capability to our YouTube channel we just. We can't do everything at once. There's very few of us who are actually working on this. It's very few. So uh, luckily, we have good editors. We have really good actors. It, it's uh, it's a great group of pretty fabulous people, mm -hmm. and uh, and and everybody is just so talented, you know, so gifted. And we have three different editors. Michael being, of course, one of them, and then and then two others who are really good editors because this. Editing is not something that I do. I do edit checks. I do all kinds of other stuff, but I, I don't do that. And I have enough on my plate uh, without I think so. yeah, adding I think, that. You know? I think you have but, a, enough. Uh, on plate. Now, this is all going to be under Hollywood Radio Players, or is it going to expand out into another name? Eventually? We don't know. We don't know. I mean, we have another name uh, for the live performing group, but. I, that's not. I, really I have a name. I came. Out, I'm a comedic person, so it just popped into my head. What is and it? I'm gonna throw it out there. I think it would be kind of cool to call it FaceForRadio.com. Call what? Faith for radio. Faith for radio. Faith for radio. 
And the reason why it's catchy, there's an old school joke that they used to tell like people that are unattractive, like, hey, you have a face for radio. Meaning that, you know. Gosh, so, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember. like, hey, you have a face for radio. Oh, face for radio. But, but in this case, face for radio means you're watching a radio program by seeing people's faces. <gasps> I'm writing it down. I'll remember that. Face yeah, I don't want no cop. I don't want no. You know, I just I love giving people. I'm a marketing guy, so I love giving people great ideas. And some of the greatest ideas are the simplest. You know, like any yes. logo on any major platform, like a Facebook or a Twitter, they don't go crazy about their logo. It's like, here, we have a bird, we have an F. This is our right. logo, but yeah, yeah. our talent is going into what we put out. And yes. what you guys have takes so much work. So much work. It needs to be so simple that people can find it like that. It's unique mm -hmm. and it's a no brainer, right? Yeah, of course. I love this. I think it's awesome. And I've always wanted to ask I'm, I'm not an actor per se. I have acted, but I'm not professionally trained. I'm just around a lot of actors. Do you find in this type of show that a voiceover actor is so much better because? A voiceover actor, when they send in submissions or reading scripts or they're doing it, and it's not, yeah. you find in these type of shows that one of the qualifications is, have you done voiceover work that may make this better, even though they're all actors? It's not it, It's not a qualification. It. I mean, a lot of us have done voiceover. Mm -hmm. And like I was the voice of ALO back in, AOL, sorry, back in the day and, yeah. and whatever, various things. and. Um, and some of us are voiceover actors. I am predominantly on camera mm -hmm. actor. We also have people who are really academics. They teach in schools. They teach, teach drama to kids. And that's that's really interesting. So the voiceover thing, it what we have to have is people who are versatile. Yeah. And everybody in the group is really versatile. Mm -hmm. Everybody does different accents. They do... Um, they they do um, different characters that are not their own gender, um, not their own age. You know, people will play a five year old, and and do it incredibly well. And uh, and then do and then the next time they're doing somebody because we have uh, gun smoke. We gun smoke is the most recent one we put up, mm -hmm. and and we'll have somebody who is really an urban city person, but they're doing, you know, Matt Dillon. And so everybody is really uh, versatile. They not only wear many hats, but as an actor, they are versatile. And a lot of a lot of our people um, have done professional voiceover. And one of our one of ours is a is a very sought after. Uh, she used to be in radio. She used to uh, be an announcer, and she was also an engineer. And and Nancy Wilson, and she um, is a, a very sought after voiceover coach and um director and uh and demo demo coach mm -hmm. and so everybody has a unique a unique skill set yeah and i agree with you totally and uh congratulations on this uh yeah thank you found love uh, i i think the cool part about this is this is a, a different career a whole new career you're getting to do acting because sh movies today there's a lot more effects. There's a lot more things going on. And I think as much as we love it, especially in action, you know, everything in movies, it's always going to take away from the actual actor. Right. Um, watching the actor. Um, I think something like this can really show people how great any of one of the actors on this thing truly is. Because whatever effects you guys use is probably so limited. It is like the focus is on the verbal. Yes, it, it, the verbal in the face, you know, yeah. because you're not seeing us walk or run or climb a tree, you know. But but we can act. Uh, yeah. So you you might think that we've just climbed a tree, yeah. and uh, so it's it's an interesting challenge that that we are confronting and 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 doing, and and it is uh, it is very different from any kind of acting. I've ever done before, whether it be on film or television or theater, or it's, it's very different because you have, it's all right here. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's all there is. Right. And, and if you can pull that off, which all of our, all of our members do and can, 
then you know you're pretty you're pretty skilled. Oh, and yeah. so, you know I do encourage uh, people to to drop into HollywoodRadioPlayers.com and and pick a show you want to see. You know we have I directed um I directed a couple of them and I have a couple more upcoming. But uh, my favorite thus far I've directed is War of the Worlds, and people thought I was crazy. It's like what you're going to do War of the Worlds on Zoom? Mm-hmm. And it's like yeah, and I know we can do it. And and we did, and and it was amazing. And my partner Michael, my producing partner Michael, um, I cast him because the directors do the casting. Mm-hmm. I cast him as Orson Welles because I had worked with Orson Welles. I knew Orson Welles back wow. in the day when I was very young, and I and I knew I could do War of the Worlds because I had Michael. Mm-hmm. Because it's really hard to find somebody who who can bring in the essence uh, of a care of a person and. Orson was playing himself in War of the Worlds. I don't know if you've ever seen it or heard it, but he was playing himself. You know, this is Orson Welles. Yeah. And um, and Michael really, he really pulled it off. And every, but everybody in it is is really good. And we have in that show we have special effects and and um, and it's very interesting. You know, you 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 get scared. You get scared that the Martians are actually coming. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the TV that was popular. In the, in the 70s and 80s and so forth was spawned from classic radio, birthed by classic radio, such as The Hitchhiker, which we, we have um, our recreation of The Hitchhiker, which is uh, is scary, mm-hmm. but it's not scary like scary is today where you cannot have your children watch it. Your children can watch this because it's really very mental. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's really theater of the mind yeah. and and so you you watch it and as an adult you won't understand and you might get a little scared right but that became hitchhiker became a very popular episode in the twilight zone yeah yeah so, you know so it, it rolled over and then orson did a um, a very long-running radio show called suspense and they did over a thousand shows and so a lot of the scary shows, not the horror, not the blood and gore, right, but just the scary, mm-hmm. scary shows um, came out of suspense. So yeah. it, it all is yeah. really interesting, really, really interesting. There's so many. I mean, you have Alfred Hitchcock, you have Stephen King. I mean, there are so many. And that's the thing. I'm sure you guys pick shows that people can really picture yes. what's going on. They can, yes. Because our mind is our worst enemy, right? When we wake up from a dream or a nightmare, and if we remember it, it's that real. So it's like imagine listening to a radio show where the actors are showing their faces of scare or happy, and you can picture the scene. Yes. And this is a show where you can leave the TV, the monitor, or your laptop, fold um, your clothes, but continuously listening to the show and yes. get freaked out. Yes. <laughs> just realize. Totally freak. Yeah. But, so, I mean, when I watch The Hitchhiker, even though it's our show and I'm in it, yeah. I didn't direct it, but I watch it and I go, oh my God, this is like creepy and scary, and but not not horror. We right. will never do horror. Never. Right. And, um, but we will do suspense and we will do scary and we will do creepy. And they're and, the great, they're the great written works out there anyway. Anything with drama or a great plot. Gosh. Now you are fortunate enough, you have a host of uh, Tom Bergeron, correct? He's Tom Bergeron. Yeah. Well, Tom, time. yes. Tom Tom has been our, our host for uh seven shows. Wow. And uh and he is incredible. I write all. I write all of the uh, intros, and I write everything except for the actual plays. Right, so I walk. I write all the promo pieces and everything, and uh, so I write the intros and I try to write them to Tom's voice. Mm-hmm. Having worked with him now for several months, you know, I, I know his. I know his voice pretty well. I don't mean his speaking voice. I mean yeah. his his essence. Right. Got it. And uh, and and he's great. He's so fast. He's so quick. Mm-hmm. He has such a quick wit. And he's so professional that, you know, we know it's going to take not much, you know, and and, um, and we love him. He's he's great. We are going to be alternating um, our celebrity hosts 
because we don't want to wear them out <laughs> and um, overuse them. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have we have somebody coming on. I can't say who it is. Mm -hmm. Starting in May, okay. and it's pretty exciting. And um, and Tom is always always there whenever he whenever he wants to be there. Mm -hmm. And then we have a third uh, celebrity host because we want to, you know, you want them to be able to breathe because it it is uh, it's a big chunk. Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> It's a lot of work to do these intros and, and it's a lot of work to write them. And so, uh, but Tom has been a gift. He's been just a, a gift from the gods because mm -hmm. also he has a very close connection to motion picture and television fund mm -hmm. that he has a, a great story. He tells when he was 16 years old and he wanted to be um, an interviewer. He wanted to interview celebrities yeah. and he, he called, um, LA from Connecticut or maybe it's New Hampshire where he lived and he called it information and said that he wanted the number for Larry Fine who was one of the three stooges he didn't know any better he's 16 years old yeah and the opera and the opera and it was long distance and long distance in those days you had to pay for it, so his parents got stuck with the bill <laughs> and uh, so if you we just did a really big interview um, all not all of us but Tom and me and Michael and Nancy mm -hmm. It was just on uh, kabc.com under Hollywood, Hollywood's Hollywood's hidden treasures. Yeah. We did an interview that just aired this Wednesday night, wow. which uh, doesn't matter the date because it's archived there forever. But where Tom mm -hmm. tells this story, tells it much better than I can because it happened to him. And he, through a series, I won't go into the whole thing, but through a series of like happy accidents, he actually got Larry Fine on the phone. What? Yeah, he did. And Larry Fine, who was one of the Three Stooges, yeah. if people watching know who the Three Stooges were. They were very classic. Um, they were radio, but they were really primarily uh, film. And uh, they did a they were slapstick and and funny, really funny. Mm -hmm. He gets Larry Fine on the phone. He's sixteen years old. Larry Fine is actually convalescing, such a small world, in the motion picture home, which is part of the Motion Picture and Television Fund. Right. It's just one thing that they fund. They fund all kinds of things. And and he talks to Larry Fine and he and he gets out his little tape recorder and he records him. And then Larry says to him, Hey, you want to talk to Mo? And he's like, Sure, I'll talk to Mo, who's one of the other three stooges. Uh, these are the two that were living at the time. And uh, and so he calls Mo and, and says and says he's going to interview. Mo says, Where did you get my number? And he said, oh, I got it from Larry. Oh, that. <laughs> you know, and and uh, so over a period of like many months, yeah. maybe even a year and a half, he inter interviewed them both back and forth, back and forth. And you mentioned Howard Stern a little while. He played some of those recordings on the Howard Stern shows. Yeah. And then it's also on those recordings are on uh, Tom's uh, wow. Tom's <laughs> website, TomBergeron.com. And we, we always joke about his imaginative name for his website, TomBergeron.com, and my imaginative name for my website, LeePurcell.com. Right, so imaginative. And yeah. uh, so he had that experience. So full circle, now he's the host for Hollywood Radio Players, which benefits Motion Picture and Television Fund. And so it's just, it's kind of like interesting. The universe, you know, brought him to us and brought us to him. And because we did not know that story. We did not. We just, because he had performed with us live doing the Maltese Falcon, playing Sam Spade. Oh, when wow. we him live. Yeah, he was great. I uh, I love untold stories, to be honest with you. It's those stories you don't even realize who you're next to, even though you know the person, but then they tell a story, you're like, wait, what? And you're like, wait, what? Say that again, please, because I didn't realize that. And it's it's so many stories out there that are in vaults of people's brains that it only comes out when the moment's right or they smell something or they see something. And they become the greatest stories because they can picture it like you're watching Hollywood radio players and just yes. tell a story. Now, before we go, if people don't know, in HollywoodRadioPlayers.com, this is where they can go watch mm -hmm. all the segments that are archived right now are people also available to make a donation to yes. the players are they able yes. to do that as well right there on on the youtube channel 
And Tom, you know, asks for a donation. If the people, you can watch it without making a donation. But right. if you can, a donation of any amount right. is deeply appreciated because the pandemic hit MPTF, Motion Picture and Television Fund, really, really hard because the need was just exponentially greater. And so, yes, they can make a donation right there. It's with a credit card. It's very easy to do, very simple and of any of any amount is is deeply appreciated yeah and i love it and guys again if you don't know it's hollywood radio players.com definitely mm -hmm. watch all the shows watch this lovely lady uh she's also directing and producing um right. if you guys are in la and they put it out there she's got the valley girl uh mm -hmm. 40 years anniversary so if you guys are lucky enough to get a ticket i definitely recommend that and uh lee we can go to your website at leepurcell.com I'm yes. assuming people want to learn more about you. She's done a lot of stuff, guys, from Carol of the Bells. Um, there's Kids and Monsters, I believe. Uh, so many great movies under your hat and so many great people you work with. And, of course, Lee, thank you for being a guest on FaceTime with Todd Warden. I appreciate you for being here. Yes, um, it's my great pleasure. It's, it's just been amazing. Yeah. It's just very easy to talk to you. Uh, you're thank really you. good and really professional and just, you know, I talk a lot, so. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'm in the same boat. Whoever knows me is probably like, oh, you really didn't say why you actually, why can't you do that at our parties? Like, <laughs> because you guys are boring. Nobody talks. <laughs> yeah. But Lee, we're going we're gonna to connect offline. We already spoke. And um, guys, definitely check this lady out. She's worth the uh, five to 10 minutes clicking on her name. Um, has a whole history, great, great history in Hollywood and more to come. And uh, guys, stick around, because even though we just had a great interview, coming up next is People Magazine rising star, Hayes Warner, is going to be right here performing her new song on FaceTime with Todd Warden. We'll be right back. Performing a new hit song, Airport, here she is, Hayes Warner. I've been drinking on a plane, mixed tequila and champagne, sorry if I sound insane. And I guess I got so messed up, cause you're not here to pick me up, not used to dealing with my feelings. Hey, how have you been? I just landed, now I'm home. Every room inside my house is haunted Now that I'm alone Cause the last time I slept here September Remember your body on my sheets You slept here with me And they still kinda smell like you I really wanted to text you And just say I never hated landing But in the airport I started understanding I'm in line thinking what do I do Cause I used to go home just so I See you, see you. And I was getting baggage I couldn't stop thinking about how I did all this damage Cause the moment that you were in there Yeah, that was the moment I knew I still care Hey, I know you probably hate me I get why Sorry that it took me this long to apologize All my clothes on the floor next to where you left Bottles in the basement, I still kinda taste it Tonight in the cab, didn't think you text back So I wrote it down, fuck it, I'll send it now I never hated Lansing, but in the airport I started understanding, I'm in line thinking what do I do Cause I used to go home just so I could see you When I was getting baggage, I couldn't stop thinking about how I did all this damage still care i've been drinking on a plane mixed tequila and champagne sorry if i sound insane and i guess i got so messed up because you're not here to pick me up not used to dealing with my feelings yeah i've been drinking on the plane i mixed tequila and champagne and i got a lot to say and i guess i got so messed up because you're not here to pick me up not used to dealing with my feelings oh.
So I just want to thank my guests, Lou Cassell and Hayes Warner, for being here on FaceTime with Todd Ward. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I know I did. But until the next time, like I always say, if you're not living a passion in your life, then who's like you living? Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.